What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, glad to see you here. It has been a little while since we did one of these, but you know what? Life needed to be balanced, work needed to be balanced, and you know what? I am jumping back into this and we're going to go strong from here, or so we hope. I was hoping this was going to be a first look on SteamWorld Quest Hand of Gilgamesh. Not Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh. But, you know what? I jumped into this game, um, with most first looks, I do a very, very brief look just to make sure it run, you know, how to start the game. And I dipped my toe a little too much in this one. And <laughs> I am now six or seven hours into the game, something like that, six hours in. And I couldn't put it down. I couldn't put it down. So you know what? I knew I had to do a video on this. I wanted to share it with you guys. But I wanted to still use the progress that I had and not start over. So we're going to, this has chapter select. I'm going to go back to the first chapter and we're going to kind of fly through some of that stuff so I can share the game with you guys, show you what it is, and uh, we'll just continue from there. So first of all, SteamWorld Quest, uh, it's a game, it's the latest from Image and Form. It is a turn-based RPG, kind of old school Final Fantasy-esque that has a card-based battle mechanic, kind of like Slay the Spire, Pirates, uh, what is that, Pirates Outlaws. Uh, it also has a massive, for me anyway, it reminds me of playing Child of Light, which I don't know why, it just has a really, really big Child of Light vibe to me, which I really, really love. Uh, it's in the SteamWorld universe. Uh, its placement is, you know, story dependent, so you'll see if you play it. And, um, uh, yeah, really, it's just a whole lot of fun. A bunch of steampunk robots, robots fighting with uh, punch cards, and it's the animation's gorgeous, and it just looks so pretty. It's a lot of fun. I did not think I was going to love it quite as much as I did. I thought it was going to get a little stale on the mechanics, but they just keep opening up as the game goes. So we're going to go ahead, and we're going to jump on in, and then I'll explain more. Chapter 1. All right, here we are. The Knight and the Alchemist. The Knight and the Alchemist. Okay, this is going to introduce us to the first of the story, our first main two characters. There are a few, but we start with a couple. And I'm going to skip the di most of the dialogue on this. I normally pay more attention to it, but this is really mostly just set up, and I'd love to get into this a little more. So that's Armily. She is a kind of a knight character who... Uh, really doesn't she she's a wannabe knight she's not there yet knight, knight in training i guess would be a, a good thing but she's not really accepted yet <laughs> the smell of hazard and fungus hit them as they search for the fabled peppermint puffer <laughs> and here's copernica she is an alchemist <laughs> so this uh, game's version of a mage <laughs> Visualizing my foot, that fully illustrated book of yours is a pun-ridden cringe fest. Hey, don't diss the book. They're hungry. They tried to get someone to come with them, but he said he'd rather eat the slowly gathering dust in his basement before joining, or joining their mushroom hunt. So we are searching for the peppermint puffer. Okay. Let's just skip this. Most of this opening dialogue, they are literally just saying... Not much. Okay, so again, this is the first level again. I am several chapters in. This is going to be a massive cakewalk for me because you can re redo chapters to look for things that were missed So and to grind out enemies. So this is going to be truly easy, but I promise the game is actually wonderfully well balanced. It is really good. I have not felt the need to grind at all in this game. I have repeated a couple chapters just strictly looking for treasure that I missed, but other than that, the game has been really balanced, uh, really challenging at some points to me, which is absolutely fantastic. I want a good challenge. Okay, so let's hop through. Like I said, there's a very nice, gorgeous animation style to this. Found some mushrooms, they're not the ones we want. Fight, fight, fight. More of those pompous posers from the village. Wait a minute. I knew the guild had some flimsy hangarounds, but you're practically rattling around in that bulky armor. Did you just call me scrawny? Whoa, easy now. I didn't say, this armor fits perfectly. 
Here we go. Okay, normally, again, I'm, I would only have two people in my party. I would have Armily and uh, Copernica, but I have another character who is going to be jumping in in, up in the next chapter. All right, so basic combat rundown of this. Each character gets eight cards in their deck, and you can customize your decks at any time outside of combat. Uh, so I've got eight cards to draw from. So that's 24 cards total with three people in my party. A, uh, six of them are dealt to me at the beginning of each hand. I can redraw some if I want to, but basically I just pick a card and play it. In this case, this is an Armalee card because you can see her, uh, her portrait in the top center. Here's a Galio card and here's a Copernica card. So you can see some of these cards say need more gears. Others are fine. There is a number in the upper right hand corner, that's how many gears that you need to play that card. Each time you play a normal action card, it gives you one gear. A big part of this thing is not just, like on, on some games like, uh, say on Hearthstone, every, at the beginning of every turn you have a certain number of, of points that you can spend towards the cards that you want to play. This one's kind of the same thing except you build those up as you play as well. So. Say, if I play this one, it's going to give me one point. See, watch this. I'm going to say I'll do Heroic Strike on the Coglin. Now in the top corner, you, or up in the top center, you can see I now have one of those red ones filled. That means I'm going to have one to spend now. I get to pick three cards, and then, well, I can just, here, I'll do this. Okay, and then I can finish my turn, and then everyone will take it. Like I said, it's very turn-based. You get to choose all your turns at once, and then watch them play out. So let me back out. So I'll do Heroic Strike. That gives me one extra cog, so I can play one of these ones with a one on it now, or I can choose to save it up and do it later. I'm gonna do Creeping Cold on this one. And then, so you can see I have zero cogs because I used that one. So now I'm gonna use one again. If I don't like the cards that I have, I am able to redraw twice, sometimes more, depending on situations. So I can redraw. That's Brave Buster. It takes two. I don't want it. Ah, Arcane Detective. Generates one additional cog for three turns. Um, I'm going to use it just for kicks on Copernica because uh, they're going to be dead in a second watch. So, Heroic Strike. One hit. Creeping Cold. Dead and dead. So every one of these cards do different things, hits different enemies, have a different, um, easy as mushroom pie. You know what? Let me see. Can I take out Galio? There, I think, I think maybe I just did a two-party thing, like I had. Uh, so every card has a different amount of, uh, like, ability set. You can see I've got my cards here. I've got ones that are, these are all the cards I have available to me for... Um, Armily. I've got four copies of Bravado, two Cleave, two Brave Busters, blah blah blah, sitting here. On the right, you can see my actual deck. These are the ones that I have sitting here. I can take them out. Say, for example, I can take out one Brave Buster. Whoops. Or I can hit the right button. <laughs> so I can take out Brave Buster. Now I've just got one copy. That leaves me seven out of eight, and I can replace it with something else. I'm going to put it back because I like my layout. Copernica, I've got a bit more of a fire-focused build right now because it goes really well with Armalee's. She has like a fire weakening thing that debuffs the enemy uh, towards fire damage. So uh, I have a more fire-focused build. But I've got Blizzard, it hurts everybody, Brain Freeze, it can hurt people. Uh, a lot of good stuff here. Cold feet, creeping cold. I do. I think cold are my favorite attacks so far, but for the most part, I'm leaving it to fire. Okay, so there's really the basics of the game. You just run, go through, you fight, and you keep going. The con the uh, combat system really gets more complex as you go. It really, really opens up, and it paces it so beautifully. For the first chapter or two, you think things aren't really changing and then boom they kind of hit you with with a, a new layer so but they don't rush you which is fantastic okay there's a treasure chest which i've already opened so it's not going to give me anything new here a big part of this game is not just searching 
or uh, searching for enemies to get through the kind of a linear-esque map system, but also trying to search for hidden treasure, which I think the end of this room will provide us an opportunity to do so. All right, this is now teaching us. Let's ambush them. Hero's Handbook says exactly how to do it. So we're going to follow along with that. Oh, there was one right here. So you see, there's nothing on uh, the map doesn't actually say there's anything to the left. This is a hidden room. And the maps are full of these things. So you need to try always try to check your edges. So I'm going to sneak up on this guy. And hit him. So because I snuck up on him, you'll notice their health has a little more missing. So it's a great way to kind of uh, take the wind out of the sails of your opponents just a bit. Of course, later on, a little more health is actually taken off. This is literally the beginning of the game, so they don't go too crazy on you. All right. Well, there is more to this game than just what I was telling you about the basic combat stuff. Let me see if I can make this work, because I am so overpowered that I don't know if I can do this. I think two hits are going to kill everybody. <laughs> I don't think I can make this work with this current layout of cards. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take Armily. Okay. Did you see that? It says Chain. Whenever you use three cards from one person, like uh, three from Armily or three from Copernica or whoever you have, you get a chain bonus. Depending on which weapon you have equipped, <clears throat> that chain bonus does different things. In this case, my chain bonus is Barrier Field, which is going to give everybody kind of a damage shield. So let's see if I can do this. I think I'm too strong. I might... Yeah, I took him out. I might be able to show you guys that on the boss. Let's rush through this. So it looks like boss is down. I do know there's a bigger enemy up top. Let's go. Let's try to fight him. Look at that guy. Oh, look at you. The character design, as with most of the Steam World games, uh, all robots, of course, steampunk robots, but the character design is flawless. I love the art style of this game. Oh, good. We've got some buff cards. This will, this will be good. You guys will be able to see, um, I think it's Lionheart is the uh, combo, or the finishing move I have for that one. Okay, so I'm going to buff. I'm going to use two victory to buff everybody. I'm going to use Aspiring Hero to further buff my strength. And I'm going to use a Heroic Strike to hopefully not kill <laughs> this guy right here. I could use Brave Buster. Absolutely would kill that guy. I, I don't want to kill him yet. I want to use my chain move. So, see, I get Lionheart up there, which damages an enemy and heals me. Not that I need it right now. Let's see if we can make this work. I just hope I don't kill him first thing, because I'm buffing my strength twice. Oh, beautiful. Awesome. There we go. Chain skills are probably one of are the most important set of skills, to me anyway, in this entire game. Um, I, especially with like the chain skills that I have Copernica have, I refuse to switch your weapon because I love the damage shield that it gives me. It is a lifesaver. Look, Copernica. Now that is a statue of Gilgamek, who is a true ancient hero who defeated the big bad guy of old. And basically, that's a glorified save, save statue here. But the fun thing about this game, which I abs I love this aspect, it's good for grinding if you think you need it, is that this doesn't just, it saves it when you walk into the room, basically, for you. It's auto-save. But if I use the statue, it will fill my MP and HP. Not that I need it again right now. But it will also cause all the enemies around to respawn. Which is awesome, because I could run all the way back through the, the rooms and there's going to be no enemies. I use this, they're all there again. This costs me nothing. So this is quite literally just an infinite enemy respawner and healer. So it's a, it's the best of a save point because then I could go ahead and grind if I really want to. Again, not needed. If I was playing, I'm playing on the middle difficulty. If I was playing on the harder one, then uh, maybe I would need it, but I don't right now. 
This is something I actually should have mentioned earlier, but I will bring it up now. I am playing on the Switch version. The PC, Linux, and Mac version of this game, I believe, come out on... Is it Friday? I think it's on the 31st, unless I'm mistaken. The embargo was actually lifted on the PC version today. I do have the PC version as well, I was sent both the Switch version and the PC version. I am playing on the Switch because, again, I, I touched, I just dipped into the gameplay. And this game is perfect for pick up and play, a quick gaming session. Get through a chapter, get through part of a level, turn it back off, come back in. Because some of these card battles can take, the boss battles can take quite a while. Um, they can be kind of tough. So, it's, it's, the Switch version just, just meshed perfectly with me. So, um... This is, like I said, that Switch version and not the PC version. But I figured I really wanted to get this out on the same day the PC version uh, content started to be released out there. Just because the timing was fantastic. Alright, so through the story we found our peppermint puffer. It smells like peppermint. It will be like eating breakfast, dessert, and brushing your teeth at the same time. We're not gonna... You know what? Let's just grab it because we're not eating it. We're using it to uh, for medicinal purposes. With a peppermint perfume prize in hand, they readied their swords. Hands off! This peppermint puffer will clean out the malt from the funnel in the old well. We're helping the entire village. Uh oh! Whoa! Did you hear that? <laughs> That's not your stomach. Look that guy. Oh darn. Whoa, I know what you're gonna say, but imagine how much stew we could... <laughs> My mushrooms! Who dares steal Gomphus's beautiful mushrooms? Easy there, Chief. We're gonna pick some... Just gonna pick some of these. Unsuspecting innocent mushrooms? Ravagers! I'm not a ravager. I'm an alchemist. Gomphus doesn't care. Gomphus will teach you not to plunder nature. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys can see. It's got a very fluid animation style to it. It's gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. So now we are fighting Gomphus. He is still... He's got 610 hit, uh, hit points. So he's not going to be a pushover. For me, he's going to be an absolute pushover. I mean, I can take him down under half in just one set of moves. So we're going to try to do exactly that. First, we're going to use Aspiring Hero to raise Armelie's strength. Then we're going to use... No, you know what? No, we're not. Let's go another route here, shall we? I'm going to use Electrolyze to get one. Hmm. Okay, well, this is a good place to show this. I don't have enough... See, both my Armel... I wanted to use Armelie's Chain Skill to buff myself. But both of these use one cog. I only get... Or one gear. I only get one gear for my electrolyze skill, and I don't have anything else to use. The smart bet here would be for me to go ahead and use these three. I just don't want to kill him. Alright, we're going to do this. We're going to use Armelie's Chain, and hope I don't do too much damage, but that'll give me enough gears, hopefully, and enough cards to, um... To allow me to buff myself next time. Oh, 20 to the face. Okay, what do we have? See, I'm, I'm gonna kill him. That's sad. Maybe I can get another... Mm, that might keep him alive. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, we're gonna use Arcane Detective, which gives me extra gears. I'm going to use Electrolyze and Searing Lash. They are my two weakest spells. And I'm going to try. Try not to kill him yet. Because I want to show you guys the chain skill. So first I buff myself with an extra gear. Electrolyze. Good. Okay, cool. Barrier field. So now each of us. You see that blue extra bar? That blue is my overfill. That's my shield. Until that's damaged and all taken out. Or until it, it runs out. Um, I have this damage shield. It's fantastic. I love this skill. It is my favorite. So I am now going to use... I don't need to wait to use anything. I'm just going to use Fire Pillar. 
and then finish my turn. Bye bye. See, I could have taken him down to half health with one spell, because he's weak to fire. And that's a powerful fire spell, because I'm a little leveled up. Level 17. Didn't even break a sweat. <laughs> I let you tag along to the forest and you turn it into a freaking fight club. I say we stuff our bags full of mushrooms and get back to the village. The things I do for learning. Hopefully not sentient mushrooms. Okay, chapter one complete. See, it's just quick and easy. Um, obviously, it was a little easier for me chapter two, because I'm so high level. The village of Goose Bucket. Of Goose Bucket. But again, I think I'm only, uh, I'm like I said, five, six chapters in, and I think I'm only maybe a third of the way into the game. This is a 15 hour game. So great for pick up and play. Great for a little longevity, just enough, and it's got great replayability. I do, I hear, I hear rumor that there is a new game plus maybe mode coming, and or uh, more stuff that you can do post game. I'm not really sure. I think we're gonna have to wait for the Steam release for that. Uh, that's coming to both the Switch and to uh, the PC, Mac, and Linux edition. So I really can't wait. By the time I'm actually through this game. I will be able to actually see what that stuff is. I've been massively holding off playing this for about two days because I didn't want to get any further into the gameplay before I started over, you know, showed you guys from the beginning. So that's why I've told you a million times already, you should never stroke a duck against the wind. Really? <laughs> um, and the humor in this is just very lighthearted, a little quirky. It's, it's a great game. I really, really love this game. Okay. There's a wagon. Now, this mysterious wagon just keeps appearing out of nowhere in the, in the weirdest spots. Sorry to disturb. We're just curious. You're totally a wise old woman, right? Oh, do you hand out quests? Because I'm more than ready for... <laughs> no. I'm afraid I'm just plain old traveling shopkeeper. And the shop's not ready for me yet, which is sad. So I'm going to skip the rest of that conversation uh, because we actually get a couple cards. But we've already received them, so it's not going to give it to us again. That shop, I was hoping to be able to show you guys um, card crafting. In this shop, you can go ahead and spend your money on buying new different types of cards. We collect, as we're going through, we collect materials. And we can use those materials towards crafting new types of cards. Uh, also spending money on them as well. Uh, they cost a little money, but, you know, they really mix things up. You could also change weapons and armor for everybody. Like, I've got an ancient sword. Serrated... I could go back to the serrated broadsword. It is a little uh, less damage for me, but I cause a bleed effect called Lacerate for my chain skill. Uh, so they do inflict bleed for three turns. And it's a fair chunk. Like, if I had bosses bleed for near 100 or so damage per, and that's every time they take an action, really. So it's really nice, and I like that way better than Lionheart because I don't... Armalee has some skills to heal herself, but I leave that to other people, and I usually use her as my uh, bigger damage dealer. So, you know, I kind of want to jump back and, and do that anyway. I don't know. Maybe not. It's great for bosses, but not so great for normal party play. Unless they've got a ton of health. Ton, ton of health. Aha! Uh -huh. uh, uh, uh. Eat it. Wait a minute. Something's not right. So, one of the things is, um, Armalee is just convinced that she's going to be a guild knight. That she's going to be a guild member, and she's going to go on official guild business, and that's kind of the drive of her character arc, is to become a guild member. And the guild basically just laughs at her, and, and, and shoos her away every time, saying, you know, go away, kid, you're, you're, you're not strong enough. They never take her seriously. Something's burning! Oh, 
So we were only gone a few hours, yet we come back, we find our town is kind of on fire. They look like serious critters. A decisive victory for the void. Those dumbbells never knew what hit them. Captain Canary. It was us, sir. We hit them, sir. Budge. Corporal Budge, as in previous villages, see to it that all guild heroes are wrapped up neatly. All right. All right, Budge. Yeah, let's do it. Um, I was thinking about just finishing it here, but I think I'm going to go just a tad bit ahead just so that you guys can see. Yeah, these two. There's Wigs. And Budge. Now, I don't know if this was intentional or not, but I picked up, or at least it, it struck me as, as, as very, very suspicious very quickly. Budge and Wigs. And in Final Fantasy VII, you had a pair of people called Biggs and Wedge, who were very popular characters. Considering the, the, the homage to the playstyle and stuff in this game, that had to have been on purpose. Had to have been. And it's part of the, the humor and stuff, at least I think, of this game. I love it. We don't ask questions. We're just rounding people up. Prepare to be punished. Oof. All right. Um, I... I'm trying to see if I, there's a way I can take them all down in one hit. Or in, like, one go. I don't think so, though. We're just going to buff our everythings. Obviously, I'm going to be taking damage here. I don't need to. I could easily have taken one of them out in one turn. Easy. I'm just going to buff. I want to see if I could do something a little more fun. Don't counter. I forgot I had that equipped. Don't do it. Don't kill him. Whew. Okay. Um, so you'll notice that Creeping Cold is one of those skills that uh, before I used it and it attacked two people. It does damage to one person and an equal amount to another. It's awesome. It's like a multi-hit. So I'm going to use Creeping Cold on Wigs because Budge is going to get hit as well. Um, I guess I'll finish you off. I mean, you'll be gone by then, but... Let's do this. Bam! Look at that. Love that skill. You can speed up battle by holding RT. Right trigger, whatever your button is. They thought I was a guild hero! Speaking of which, where are the guild heroes? Someone's coming, coming on guard, you pyromaniacs! All right, and you know what? I'm going to leave it there. A little bit of a teaser. If you like turn-based games, if you like card games like Slay the Spire or anything along those lines, play this game. You will not be disappointed. It's wonderfully balanced. It is wonderfully animated. It is gorgeous, gorgeous style of artwork. Very well paced. The only thing I have a problem with, I guess, is the stores, the shops, which we haven't gotten to yet, but they are massively overpriced. Gold does not come that easy in this game, and you pay an arm and a leg. Usually when you come across a new uh, shop, you can only afford a couple cards, and then everything else is gone. Uh, or maybe a weapon, because those are expensive too. Everything is a bit overpriced. That's my only gripe about this game. Otherwise, it's fantastic. If you guys want to go check it out, like I said, it is out this weekend. Uh, at least, I believe that the launch date was the 31st for PC, Linux, and Mac. If you have a Switch, go get it on the Switch instead if you'd rather. Uh, if you want the portability, I am sure the frame rate's probably going to be a little better on the PC. Uh, I think it's 30 on the Switch. It might be 60. But I guarantee you it's going to definitely be a 60 frame per second on PC. So, um, yeah, you know, pick your poison. But either way, play this game. I'm absolutely going to love it. Now that I've done this with you guys, I don't know if I'm going to further record more of this game down the line or if I'm just going to blow through the game and maybe we'll come back and circle back for a new game plus. Actually, that sounds like a better idea because I would love to go through this game with you all. But, um... 
honestly, I just want to sit and play it. I enjoy it that much, so... All right, I guess we're going to go ahead and call it good here. Thank you so much for being here on the channel with me. And, yeah, I'm going to go play. I'll see you all next time.